Welcome, everybody. Um, this is the October edition of Plant Power, um, conversations that sprout ethical change. And we're really happy that you're here. My name is Johanna, and I'm here with my friend Brie. Hey there. <laughs> and uh, today we're going to be talking about marketing, which is one of both of our like favorite topics. And more specifically, we're going to look into some cool examples of email marketing that you can also hopefully learn from and take ideas for your own marketing. Um, so we're going to do copy critiques of some, a few, uh, three uh, plant-based um, brands or yeah, different kinds of cool brands we've, we've found um, who, in our opinion, do like email marketing really well. And we're going to share our, uh, our thoughts with you and, and do like a live critique. We're going to be sharing our screens. So that's what you can expect from today. Um, let's see. So in, in writing emails as a copywriter for a brand, um, I keep a whole inspo file, like an inspiration file from my own inbox. And I highly recommend that you guys do as well. Um, mostly in my inspiration file are just screenshots of subject lines because I follow so many email lists that grab my attention, make me laugh, pique my interest. Um, so make sure with your subject lines that you are creating a hook that's really engaging um, and resonates with your target audience. Um, what is going to make them laugh? What is going to make them open the email? Um, whatever your intention is for that email. It doesn't have to be humor, but I am partial to humor. Um, as far as the body of the email, um, I, I always advise my clients to not be afraid to get vulnerable, to, to really show their authenticity and, and who they really are in their storytelling. Um, this can come with a, a background story of like why they founded their company or why they founded their organization and why they're working on that mission. Um, it can also come with the use of specific words, right? Um, we are both um, mentors of Alex Catoni at the Copy Posse and she is one of the most authentic writers that you will read. Um, she uses words like rad. And when was the last time you saw rad? just like generally in the in the world. I only see it with Alex's stuff. Yeah. So she has a whole bit of language that's very authentic yeah. to her and her brand. So really leaning into that with your email storytelling. Um, and then probably one of my pet peeves that I usually flag for clients um, is to is not go overboard with design. You know, uh, yeah. in the world of social media and Instagram and everything has to be flashy and everything, right? Like, all too often people want to make it colorful and bright and tons of pictures. And that's, that's great. Like it has a place and I'm not trying to make you go away from that, but play around and test some plain white emails. Um, mm -hmm. Only include one picture. The more pictures you include, it could hurt de uh, deliverability. So those are things to keep in mind, but the busier it is, the harder it is for the person to really understand your message oftentimes. So sometimes simplicity wins. Um, if you're curious to see how it works for your brand, do an A-B test. You know, test the same content of the email with a plain uh, format and a fancy format and see which gets oh. more engagement, right? Um, so yeah, those, those are some of the things that I look for in emails. How about you, Joanna? Uh, yeah, I mean, you covered a, a lot of good stuff. Like I can't, I can only um, agree. I think um, like when it, when it comes to subject lines, I mean, they're so Im important, like, because it's, you know, it's what decides whether people are going to read your message or, or not. Like I, when I write emails, I actually find subject lines the, the hardest. And I think one tip I would give is really like, don't, don't try to write it first, uh, like, or maybe you you function that way, but like I I feel like the more I practice or the more I like variations I I try to come up with, they just get better and better with time. And like with with practice, you also get get better. But I think uh, yeah, don't don't put too much effort into that from the get go. Uh, it's better I think to do it once the actual email is finished. Um, and I think for me personally kind of going to like very basics like oh when I start to write an email I mean mostly for my clients because I don't have my own email list yet I'm planning to start it but 
I'm I kind of like really focus like, okay, like why am I writing this email? Like there should always be a reason. And what is the value to the to the person, the one person who's reading the email? Like why, um, like whether you're trying to convince them of something or tell a story or or sell something or make them open open your blog like really kind of yeah try to put myself in in their shoes as as much as possible and and yeah like why 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 is the email valuable and, and for sure I I also love these very like personality packed emails where people just like share what they're doing like books they read like thoughts whatever whatever happened like even when you're not necessarily like selling <laughs> anything and all the emails you send have have their place it's uh actually good that you don't don't just send um sales emails all the time and and i think the storytelling what you also mentioned it's so important and, and emails are a perfect place to um practice storytelling because people really love stories and even if you don't believe it like you also have cool stories and and whatever you're doing out in in the world like you can there's al al almost always like some story you can connect to the point you you want to make and and yeah just remember pe people love it and and like specific things like fun yeah funny like details um i like that kind of stuff at least and yeah i think that's what what came to that's my mind now point, though um because i think all too often we we think uh that we have to be perfect or that we yeah. have to be very polished you know um especially when it comes to businesses you know they want to look very like put together and create a very curated look and feel but people buy from people yeah. um, so even if you're not the face of your brand do a takeover for a day and send an email as the founder and tell your story or tell something that's going on in your life um, and link it back to your product like if you're a nail polish brand talk about how you went to get a manicure and things went awry and you really wish that they just had the vegan polish that you wanted and tie it back to what you're selling and, and sell that pain point that resonates with your audience. Right. So it does, it can be a mix. And I think that's such an important point that you brought up that I just want to hit home is you have to nurture too. Like you, mm. you have to speak to the human too. Um, these brands that are just spamming people with sales and the latest drop and all, yeah. it, it turns into noise and it goes yeah. into the promotions folder. It goes into the spam folder yeah. all too easily. Um, the way to avoid that is to be human, right? Yeah, yeah. Like nobody, nobody wants that. Like I speak for everybody. <laughs> It's like, no, nobody just wants like uh, this random noise in their in inbox like they're f they're full enough so uh, this exactly. human, human connection even if you have a like an e-commerce brand or I I bet even for the most whatever b2b high-tech brand there's like a human connection that you can um acknowledge and and like nurture if if you like dare to maybe do sometimes it might might mean like daring to do differently than than people generally do but that's a way to stand out also so yeah absolutely absolutely and I think too for those that aren't in the marketing world that might have built a small email list to this point or um the the email retention numbers aren't where they want you know it can be all too easy to forget how important email is and it can be all too easy to just sell, sell, sell. Um, if, if you want to build an email, if you want an email list, if you want to build that steadfast community of supporters and customers that are there for you to tap into whenever you want, like you already know that they love your products. It's not like social media where they might follow you. They might not. Maybe they just saw your ad. You don't know if they really like your product. These people gave you information and they are there because they believe in your brand. Right. Yeah. Um, and so it's so, so important to, to really lean into your email list. Plus mm -hmm. 
you know, let's put on our little nerdy marketing hats for a minute. And people are in their inboxes, right? Mm -hmm. They are opening emails. It is the place to reach your customers. Um, yeah. And I, I just, I want to emphasize that because I've spoken to a few clients recently that are like, oh yeah, I have an email list. I, I never email them. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. If they never hear from you and you just come out of the blue selling something like that feels really off to them. You have to build a relationship with them. Yeah. Um, but, but if you do that, if you put in that work, then they are there ready to buy your product, ready to support you. So I, I just yeah. wanted to stress that too. Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad you glad you did because that it it's the truth and kind of like building on on that like I think a lot of people just like remember that you your social media follower following or the people like you you don't you don't have any control over that at, at the point at the end of the day but your email is is yours like I want I have often mentioned this um one example like the Finnish uh the the january the january like the <laughs> um finnish version they their instagram account got hacked at the start of this year and they lost something i think it was like twenty thousand followers or or even more and they like luckily they had an email list that they um could um you know <laughs> email and, and let them know hey this this happened but imagine if you if you didn't have a list and I mean even now like they're still like you know trying to get some of the people back or most like it's it, these things happen like you never know all right so you want to dive in to some specific yes. emails okay cool Absolutely. um so I picked two brands because I'm indecisive um <laughs> But the first one is Mudwater, and you guys might be familiar with this. It's a coffee alternative brand. Um, I'm trying to cut caffeine in Q4, so Mudwater is helping me do that. But the reason I picked them is because their marketing has me laughing. Every single email, every single communication that I get from them, they really leverage humor. And as I mentioned at the top, humor is my weak point. Um, I mean, just look at the subject line up here. We look forward to sleeping with you. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry, what? Wait, what? <laughs> um, so not only was that humorous, but it, it caught my attention because I'm like, wait, what? Like, because it has a double meaning, sleeping. So I was like, okay, who's sleeping with what now? Um, and it made me open the email to figure out what they were talking about. And immediately their headline is, oh wait, that didn't sound right. So they're continuing the joke, they're owning that that play on words. And then they're bringing you through the email by saying, let us explain. It gets you to scroll through the email. Um, one thing that we didn't mention at the top is that so, all too often, people open the email, see the header, see that first little bit. And if they're not hooked, they're not going to keep scrolling. So they'll yep. click in, click out. So it doesn't matter how great your story is. If you can't get them past that first paragraph or that first header, you're not going to get anywhere with them on that email. Um, so I really loved how they brought me through the email. Um, and then they tell a little bit of story. It started as a morning ritual, but often best morning ritual starts the night before. Didn't even think about that. Yeah, sleep, yeah. you're right. You know, and so they're they're educating, they're talking about their products, they're talking about the ingredients, but they're bringing a relevant story to me. Like, yeah, I, I am currently in a place where I am changing my morning routine. I never thought about how my sleeping routine yeah. transitions into that. So I loved the, the combination of humor, relevancy, um, and storytelling here. Um, and then they pick up the humor again. The taste is equivalent to curling up with your grandma's knitted afghan and reading the sixth Harry Potter book on a stormy Sunday evening. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I love the specificity it's like so exactly that's I can picture that too. Yeah. that's another great point about emails is the more you can tell that story and and put your reader specifically in the scenario that you're trying to convey where your product can help them the more you're going to get engagement out of that email um and again they end with so dim the lights put on some Nora <laughs> Jones and say hello to your new evening routine I mean Come yeah. on, how are you not going to click shop now? I just, I loved this email. Um, 
But to show, show some variety, I wanted to pull one of their other emails that wasn't as humorous. Um, it still had a, a hook in the headline and that subject line, excuse me, that made me open it. I'm not mad at coffee, just disappointed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, me too. That's why I'm yeah. trying to switch, right? I'm also disappointed in coffee, <laughs> but it was a fun way to say it. And it caught my attention in my very crowded inbox. Um, and then they tell me exactly what's going to be in this email in their header, how it all began. Okay. I'm sitting down and I'm ready for a story. This is going to be a founding story about the brand. Um, the other thing too, is you'll notice who this is from. Mm. Most of their emails are from Mudwater, but this is from Shane yeah. from Mudwater. And so sometimes it's good for brands to mix it up. Like we talked about in the beginning, like if you're a founder and you mostly send from Mudwater, um, to put your name in there and that'll catch attention because they'll be like, wait, I, I haven't seen that before. Let me open this and see what it's about. I haven't seen Shane before. Um, and then he immediately introduces himself. He doesn't make me wait to figure out who he is, why he's emailing me. Um, I'm Shane. I started Mudwater and here's why. Immediately clear, cuts to the point. I know what to expect. And he identifies with me and some of the pain points that I'm going through. I liked coffee. I did too. Um, the smell, the taste, but I liked the ritual. Same, Shane. I could not start my day before I had my cup of coffee. So he's really identifying with his audience here. But the dream stopped there. I would finish the cup and have an anxious peak of sprinting alertedness. Oh my gosh, me too. I would answer so many emails at nine o'clock in the morning as soon as my coffee hit. But now it's this easy ritual that um, Mudwater has brought me. So he explains that he dropped coffee, lost his ritual, but wanted to create a new one. And that's where Mudwater came from. He nailed the recipe. Um, he explains what it tastes like with a little bit of humor, right? Yeah. <laughs> Masala chai and mushrooms <laughs> made a baby, a really healthy baby. <laughs> he talks about the benefits, right? But gives you a little peek into the taste as well. And it, it's comforting because it, it lets me know that he's got me. And that's one of the best things that you can do in an indoctrination sequence is let your customer know, hey, I see you, I understand you, and I've got you. This product is going to hold your hand through this transition. Um, and he ends it with gratitude, which mm -hmm. just felt like a per perfect um, cap on an email that's all about like comforting and, and replacing your ritual with something that's going to bring you the same yeah. level of comfort, right? Um, oh, I love it. Right? Aren't it? Yeah, I, I just I think they do a great job. Yeah. Um, I think one one more thing I wanted to mention with mud water. Um, oh yeah, was it would f up my sleep and leave me groggy the next day. So when we were talking about phraseology with Alex earlier, um, another thing to think about with your brand is do you curse? Mm. Um, do you use specific words? Do you, do you use humor? Some brands don't even use humor. So again, like this is a brand that isn't afraid to play with that, isn't afraid to curse. Um, but think about your own brand and think about um, your target audience. Are they someone that curses? Are they someone that would be open to seeing someone curse? Um, not every brand is. But the more you think about your phraseology, the easier it is to write to someone who speaks or reads that way. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll pause there for a minute, Joanna. Any any reflections or reactions? Um, like I was wondering if if you um have any like uh like feedback, like things to improve on from uh from my order at this point, or um, that's a really good question. Um, like not that there I... always needs to be. Like I I I also really. I love it. Like it's it's yeah, very yeah. engaging, but yeah. I was wondering if anything came to mind. Yeah, I think the main thing that came to mind for me, um, like I mentioned, this this email from Shane was in the minority in their emails. So so one thing that might be nice to see would be some sprinkling or experimentation with reviews. Mm -hmm. Um especially when you're asking someone to give up something that is such a habit, something yeah. that's like it's just a part of them. Like coffee was just a part of me. I just did it automatically. Um, the more I can see that other people made the transition um, easily, you know? Um, so maybe hearing from um, 
some of your past customers, like in the first email that we showed, maybe if you put a review at the bottom about how that nighttime mud water helped someone with their morning routine, that might have sealed the deal, you know, and, and really made me want to press shop now. So um, I think my main piece of feedback would be to to experiment with um, reviews and not be afraid to leverage those. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, all right. Then the next brand, not necessarily a plant-based brand, but I thought dogs. <laughs> Who does dogs? Um, so I, again, absolutely love BarkBox. Again, they are one that, you know, catches my attention with humor um, oftentimes. But one thing that they do more often than mud water is they um, are doing a little bit more of that um, almost spammy subject line where they're like hey mm -hmm. these new toys just dropped or hey mm -hmm. there's a okay. sale you know what I mean and so if we're thinking about critiques like maybe we can focus a little bit more on um identifying your target audience and what is going to interest them about the drop instead of just like hey new products but why do I care about the new products mm -hmm. and put that in the subject line instead um but this email in particular I I liked that the um the subject line was a note from your dog. So I was like, wait, what? <laughs> my dog wrote me something. Um, it caught my attention. And then you'll see the send from name is Pie and Bark Box. And Pie is my dog. Um, so they put in my dog's name to the send from name. So it was like my dog was emailing me. So I thought that was really clever. And then they proceed to write the email from my dog's point of view, which again, I thought was really clever because you're you're thinking about a brand that is um that has a target audience mm. who are people that are willing to spend more on their animals right this is not a need this isn't dog food vet care or something like that this is toys um so they're spending extra money on their animals every month so this is someone who wants to spoil their animals they want they think of them as having voices and whole lives outside of what we do with them every day like what what do they do when i go to work i i want to know you know that type of person and so giving my dog a voice was really, really clever here. Um, dear human, <laughs> as we've discussed, typing messages without thumbs is really hard. <laughs> Immediately I'm laughing, I'm hooked, I'm yeah. gonna read the whole email, right? Um, and so, and then there's a little bit of gratitude. I appreciate you getting me BarkBox. It's a sneaky way to drop in their brand when you, I'm already thinking about my animal and something I yeah. love. Right. So they're they're tying that empathy and that compassion that I have for my animal to their brand, which is really, really smart from a psychology and marketing standpoint. They've now equated their brand with the love I have for my animal. Um, uh, <laughs> so let's see, especially so I could stop emailing you every time we're running low on toys, because um, every once in a while they will shoot an email like oh it's time for pie's next box or pie wants to let you know that it's time for her next box that sort of thing um so they continue it word on the street has it that many of my friends at the dog park are still living without this modern miracle dogs living without bark box you know this this tone of voice again thinking of words thinking of how you're going to speak to this person Sometimes the easiest thing to do would, would be to think about your brand and then think about which of your friends would buy that brand or use that brand. And then how would you talk to your friend about that brand? Um, so this lighthearted um, and, and easygoing tone of voice that they have is, is something that I would use with my friends. And I, I think it's really on point. Um, and then they end the email, love pie. So again, from my dog. So I just, I, I absolutely love that they bring my dog into this. Um, the other email for contrast from them is more of a salesy email. Um, so Scout at Bark is their normal send from name, um, but they did include my dog's name in the subject line. So it still got my attention, not to scare Pi, but ooh, open loop, but what? Why is Pi scared? I wanna know. Um, and immediately it's their new collection, right? And so this is more of your e-com, very salesy, and here are our products email. There's not a lot of content here. It's mostly showing versus telling. Um, 
And so I wanted to add this one as a, as a contrast because this one is more about that sales, mm. that sale. They yeah. want to secure, they want you to add this onto your box, right? And so sprinkling in a sales email with that nurturing email from Pi, you know, a note from my dog, um, is a really great way to create that balance. Um, overall, looking at my inbox from Bark, they could do that a little bit more. Um, but I just wanted to show the contrast between the two because we brought it up at the top of the call of how you have to build a relationship with your audience. Um, otherwise, you end up in the promotions and spam folders or they unsubscribe because you're just selling, 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 and you're not offering anything beyond, yeah. hey, I want your money, you know? Um, so any thoughts or reflections, Joanna? <laughs> um, wow. Well, I never saw, um, this kind of, um, emails before, like, uh, where they actually like ask for your dog's, um, name and, and then email, <laughs> email your dog. I really love it. Do you remember, uh, if they only ask for your dog's name or also your name, because like I was wondering if they could have taken the personalization even further, like, because there was like, for example, the dear human, like if it, you know, could be interesting to see that it's, you know, dear Brianna and then it goes on. But yeah. I guess they didn't ask I, for your name or. I think they did when I set up the account, but I wonder if on like the, the management side of uh, it. Yeah, they that can't do it. Yeah. Two first names. Yeah, they true. might have to set up my name as Pi's last name yeah, or something. Yeah. You know? Um, then they could put in the code for first name and last yeah. name. So it could be both of us. There's probably a way to do it. Um, but yeah, that's probably on the management side yeah, of things. But yeah. I think that would be really cool to see both of us. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, but I, but I love them and I like I like seeing these kind of two. But there's this very, this looks so much like an e com uh, like email. And then the other one you showed that it, it's, uh, yeah, this much more has, has this like human connection or this human to animal connection in there. So I like the variety. Um, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks for sharing. And I actually yeah. didn't know either of these brands. So I'm, I'm glad to discover something new. <laughs> Join their email list, if nothing else, for some inspiration. Yeah. Right? Uh, if you're uh, ever stuck, this is for our audience, if you're ever stuck, join the email list of brands that you admire and, yeah. and see what they're pointing out um, and putting out to their their customers and let it inspire you. Yeah, for sure. That's a that's a good tip. So um, I'm going to share my screen now. Um, happy Carrot Skin Care. Gosh, I love it already. Yes, I can see it. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, this is like their their homepage. I just wanted to uh, quickly show this. Uh, so this is a small uh, skincare brand uh, from the UK, um, and I like I know the person running this um, brand uh, a little bit. Um, we've hung out in some of the same online circles, and that's why I signed up on the email list. But the the thing here is that like I'm not really into like skincare or like online shopping for for skincare and like this this beauty niche is is really not mine but i love these emails and i think it's a it's a sign that it's they're doing or she's doing something something really cool and i think happy carrot is a great example of of e-commerce uh, email marketing that's really feels authentic and has this fun vibe and that's all about the human connection it feels like the emails are actually coming from a real person and um and i think it it's so unique in this space like so i don't know i like i don't do a lot of online shopping i'm like like a little bit of old school but i feel like the the brands who's for example cosmetic brands the so far the emails like they're so they're kind of fancy and impersonal and all yeah all these things that you were saying and you don't really after a while like you don't really want to open them because it's just like trying to uh, push the sale and I don't really get often you don't really get to know the people behind or really the mission and and I just think this is such a cool example of how you can do e-commerce email marketing differently so I wanted to showcase 
this uh, yeah I think it really stands out so here's the after signing up um, on the email list here's the email you get that's the first one I I wanted to show so the um, subject line is skincare but different like I mean it piques my curiosity and actually I wanted to mention at this point about this welcome email it's so important and like one of the things that get gets me just really like annoyed and confused is if I sign up uh, uh, to somebody's email list and then I don't get an, a welcome email not even one you know you could also send a few like the you know, you could actually send a sequence of a few emails. And this, this is the time when people are like the hottest for your brand. They, they want to know what you do and, and who you are. And then I just can't get it. Um, don't understand it when brands then just kind of ignore you. It feels kind of rude even <laughs> Some, sometimes. But anyways, uh, so Victoria sends this welcome email. So good on, good on her. And it comes from Victoria and Happy Care Skincare. Hi, Johanna. I just spotted that you just signed up to the Happy Care Skincare newsletter and I got so excited. See? Looks like I lost my arm somehow too. Um, well, just in case you're worried that I'm actually a dancing carrot, below you can see me at VegFest a couple of years ago. <laughs> and, and it's just like, I'm like, yay! there's humor and and it's like different and oh I, like I want to I really want to like scroll now and see like oh there she is and um like I'm gonna read like all the all the de uh, like details of, of the content but she mentions here like to help uh, to help you I'll be in touch three-ish times a week with an email about all things skincare well-being some inspiration and so on so I know exactly what to expect from from now on and um and yeah and then there's this small detail at the end that I really like so what makes Happy Carrot skincare products different to other skincare? Well, I'll be in touch to tell you more tomorrow. What, watch out for it. The subject line will be if skin, skincare had superpowers. And I really love this, um, this um, kind of, I forgot the name now, like we've learned it, but this like serialized emails or this this kind of where you where you end with this, that okay, like there's more to come and 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 there's this building up this anticipation and I I think this is like a cool way of 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 using that. Um, and so I I just thought that this is a very cool example of a of a simple, fun, authentic feeling uh, welcome email, and then at the end there's like visit the shop here but it, it's not like not pushing the sale like right away and then um then there's i'm just checking then there's a couple of content emails i want to show very simple um want to get more from your skincare okay this could be maybe a little bit more specific um to give like a bit of bit of critique like really to pick my curiosity to open it open it uh hey johanna one of the things you uh you tell me you love about my skincare products is how far they go a little goes a long way but what if you could make them last even longer getting even more value check out my new blog how to make your skincare last longer which of my tips will you be using it's very simple but um but if this is like it makes me want want to open like if uh, like i feel like it's really like talking to the talking to the reader and some and having identified like an issue that they they care about or you know maybe for whatever reason like low on on money or or uh, but yeah so I like it and it's it's just like very brief like you don't always have to send really long emails totally that's such a great point that we haven't talked about yet is length yeah like yeah. Even if it's just what is this like? How many sentences? Like maybe five. Like it 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 can be an email. You know, yeah, we we yeah. all think email is more formal than social media, but 
I, I think it, you know, you can, you can play with the length and yeah. the sentence and see how they perform, see yeah. what your audience wants to. Yeah, and a lot of Victoria's emails um, or the emails from this brand are pretty short. And I think, I mean, this is also, you know, you can think about your brand, what, what it's like, or you, what, what you're like. For example, I can, like, I'm very wordy in, or like I, <laughs> I write long messages. So I imagine my emails when I'm going to start writing them, they're going to they're gonna be long. But if maybe you're like more short and punchy and also keep in mind that most people read their emails on a phone, like something like this, it's, it's like really cool and uh, quick to go through it on your phone and then click if it speaks to you. So then another content email, uh, the subject line is hormones. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm interested. Could be like, could be some something uh, that piques my curiosity uh, even more again, but um, yeah. Hey, Johanna, some of the questions I get asked the most about uh, are hormones and the skin. Can I use your products while I'm pregnant is one of them. Short answer, yes. What skincare uh, should I be using now I'm entering menopause is another. Short answer, simple nourishing products. Now, while I know more or less the effects on hormonal changes on the skin, I thought there was more learning to do on the menopause specifically. So I've started a really interesting course on, uh, on menopause and hormonal skin aging. What are your questions about hormones and the skin? I'll be sharing with you uh, what I learned soon. soon. Um, have you noticed changes in your skin due to hormonal changes and during pregnancy or menopause? A question. I just realized this wasn't the content email I, I wanted to showcase. This was the, the third type of email I wanted to share. But anyways, so she's asking, she's simply asking a question, like sharing what she's, um, what's happening in her life, her, her business and, and engaging with your audience. I mean, this is if people answer, like it's it's good for your uh, deliverability, and and it's just I don't know. Again, it feels has this like friendly, casual tone, like it's coming from a real person, and I I really appreciate it. Um, it definitely does. One thing I'm curious about. Uh, mm -hmm. Scroll up a little bit to the questions. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about multiple questions in an email? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question. I think my marketing mind says stick to one, like one specific question. You're probably more likely to, it's going to stay in people's mind. They're more likely to answer. What do you think? Yeah, I think that goes to um, our, our point about specificity and, mm -hmm. and simplicity, right? Yeah. Um, that way you you really get the answer that you're looking for so between the two questions she's asking about my personal questions around hormones in the skin that might be related to my experience right so we could we could combine these questions they're essentially asking the same thing like she's mm. asking about my experience and my questions about the That's same true. topic so that might be a, a way to streamline that make yeah. it a little clearer for the audience yeah that's a good point um yeah, very good point. And then I wanted to showcase something I've I've also seen at the end of some other uh, email lists I'm on. Like at so there's the best best wishes, Victoria, and then there's this at the end. Also, when you're ready, here's how I can help you. And as far as I I can tell now, like or more most of the emails or all of the emails that come from her have this kind of like a I don't know what to call this like a footer. So there's like you can read the blog. Um, you can visit the online um, shop or then you now she's offering these online skincare workshops so I really like this like it's it's kind of it's leading with the there's the value first or whether it's like entertainment or education or whatever and then there's um, always the whenever you're ready you can you know pick and choose uh, what do you think about this I like it. Um, I, again, this plays with email length, right? She's mm -hmm, adding yeah. some additional information. I'd be interested to see the metrics, like if, if people actually clicked through on some of these links. I've also seen this with nonprofits where 
they'll do um, kind of a mission statement and ask for a campaign they're running, and then they'll have a blog type information share um, let's say it's a rescue they'll talk about the animal that they just saved you know to kind of bolster that donation ask so the first part of the email would be like hey we're running this campaign we we're trying to raise x amount of dollars to save x amount of animals mm -hmm. and then after the signature this second part would go into a story about one of the animals they saved to kind of boost engagement in this similar way um so I, I have seen uh, brands and organizations play around with it. I think there's a place for it. It's a, it's a yeah. format to have in your back pocket, right? To, yeah. Like we were talking about with um, nurturing through variety. Yeah. Um, throw it in there so that not every email looks the same. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this is a nice little touch also to keep in mind if you, if you want like did someone forward you this email sign up for our emails here so it might be a way to uh, get some new su subscribers um i had another email but it was uh, but i think i covered everything i wanted to go and i the time time is running so i think i'll i'll leave it at at that but i just want to kind of close with a like a three uh, three points that I wanted to make about this <laughs> this brand I think this is like persuasive marketing and not not pushy it's actually building a relationship with you and leading I feel like it's leading with me like the reader first instead of pushing for the sale and then like we don't see it here now but uh, but the emails come like at least a couple of times a week I think maybe even three times a week and it's so important to keep consistent with with your emailing like whether like you don't have to email this often maybe it's once a week uh, but then ideally stick to it because it um, people really like consistency and then it, it uh, builds um, trust um, and then here like I mentioned it already this is an e I guess like primarily an e-commerce uh, brand um, selling co like sustainable vegan cosmetics, but uh, there are almost no like there are almost no pictures. It's leading. It's like simple text-based emails and leading with the with the words as opposed to these super fancy emails that are mostly pictures, not so much of the message. Like sometimes here, I'm. I'm missing the pictures a, a little bit because like skincare is so visual so maybe maybe there could be like you could uh, spice it up with some pictures or uh, or gifts at, at some point but this is also like what depends on what your brand is like but I really like that this is this feels very different and, and unique in this e-com space so I uh, love that I think good yeah. job yeah yeah I'm so glad you shared it um, and I, I love what you shared too about your reflection of persuasive versus pushy. Um, I think she does it really well. I mean, she's signing all of her emails from her, right? Yeah, so that's yeah. one of the main ways to yeah. make it more authentic. You know, you're, you have a clear voice. It's coming from the founder every time. It's not just some random, um, person in a huge company you know you feel like when you're reading it that she's speaking to you yeah um so that's really really important and I know that we we talked about perhaps doing an audit like this of ads for next mm -hmm. time yeah and I think that's really important in ad strategy too um in email and ads and anytime you're selling or asking for money <laughs> honestly today's consumers <clears throat> excuse me today's consumers have gotten so savvy they know when they're being sold to they know when you're asking for money you can't hide it but you can add authenticity you can package it more persuasive than pushy and there are ways to connect with people um, that they haven't seen before or that might get them hooked before they realize that you're asking for a sale mm -hmm. so going back to that that point about like um spamming them with sales and new products and everything versus here's a story and here's why this will help you giving a reason and identifying with their pains and that sort of thing um so maybe we, we can talk more about that when we dive into ads yeah yeah that sounds good
Uh, I feel like, yeah, there, there's so much more to talk about, but I think we've talked nearly an hour, so <laughs> probably it's time to <laughs> It was so off. juicy, though. It was so, so juicy, though. And I hope that everyone watching has pulled something that they want to go yeah. try or go optimize an email with. So if you did, let us know. Drop a comment. Send us a message. We'd love to know if this was helpful, if you'd like to see more episodes like this. Um, and friendly reminder that we are still hoping to interview someone in a future episode. So if you have a brand that you'd like your copy critiqued or you'd just like to share your story, um, we would love to hear from you. Yeah, let us know. <clears throat> awesome. Cool. Well, thanks so, for taking the time, Joanna. <laughs> yeah, thank you. See you next time.